Hi, I'm Jordana. I'm a holistic nutritionist and the founder of the Mindful Clinic. You're watching the N Health channel to learn from the best about health and success. We've all been there before. You finish a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner and you have to unbutton your pant button on the way home. You swear to yourself you'll never eat that much again. And you move on with your life. Until next Thanksgiving, of course. But what happens if the binge doesn't stop at Thanksgiving? What happens if you swear to yourself you'll never do that again and the next day you find yourself in the exact same place, undoing your button and filled up to the brim with treats and shame? Overeating is totally normal and even arguably healthy in small doses. But when overeating becomes chronic, it can do more harm than good, both psychologically, physically, and emotionally. The habit of overeating has many different names, including stress eating, emotional eating, and binge eating. In all cases, it's a disordered eating pattern. So how do we develop disordered eating patterns? To understand the origin of overeating, we first need to become familiar with our hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin. Leptin is the hormone that says, I'm full, and ghrelin is the hormone that says, I'm hungry. Food was originally designed as a means for survival. People would eat so they could literally survive. As we have evolved as a species, food has been manipulated in ways to make it genetically modified so it's tastier, sweeter, and saltier. In the clinical world, we call this highly palatable. This brings me to the first reason why people develop an overeating pattern, and that is because food has become addictive. Dr. Nicole Avina is a personal hero of mine, and she conducted a study on rats and gave them cocaine and sugar. She found that the rats actually became more addicted to sugar than cocaine. Eating these processed and highly palatable foods stimulates neural pathways in the brain related to our pleasure centers. When these pleasure centers fire over and over again, the human brain becomes accustomed to feeling those short bursts of pleasure and sends signals of withdrawal or desire when we are not eating. If you would like to test if you're truly hungry, you can try the broccoli test. This is an exercise I go through with my clients and I ask them, when you have a craving, ask yourself, would I eat unsalted boiled broccoli right now? If the answer is no, then you are not truly hungry. Besides, I've never seen anybody addicted to broccoli. When we are hungry for something very specific, like chocolate or chips, it's a sign that it's not true hunger, and it's likely coming just from a craving. The second factor is related to food conditioning. It's important to note here that we live 95% of our day in our subconscious mind. This means that we are not even aware of the thought patterns that are prompting our behavior. The brain does this to save brain energy, so we live a lot of our day in autopilot. An example of this would be if you've ever opened up a bag of chips and the next thing you know the whole bag is gone. You did not consciously finish the bag, your subconscious was governing your behavior. Additionally, there's a concept called state-dependent memory. This suggests that when we are in a specific state, whether it be emotional or physical, our brain remembers and it prompts us to behave in ways that we did when we were in that specific state before. For example, if we come home every night and after dinner we eat snacks on the couch while watching a show, every time we sit on that couch, we are going to be prompted to eat. Our body will even start producing enzymes to break down the food that we have eaten on that couch before. Again, this is an adaptive measure to save brain energy, so we don't really have to think about how to behave when we enter similar environments. The third factor is related to our emotional well-being. Our brains are neurologically designed to feel safe when we eat. This goes back to primal times where food was scarce and our entire day was spent hunting and gathering. While we were eating, the nervous system is relaxed because we're fulfilling a basic need for survival. When there is stress in our lives, we stimulate the sympathetic nervous system and turn on the fight or flight, which was biologically designed to help us run away from danger. 
In today's world, where stress is a major factor in people's lives, this fight or flight response is firing far more than we were designed to handle. An easy way to turn this response off is to stimulate the rest and digest, or the parasympathetic nervous system. And eating forces the body into this restful state, making us feel safe. This is how someone develops a stress eating habit. You eat to escape the feeling of emotional stress. With most people in lockdowns, I have seen rates of emotionally eating drastically increase in my practice, simply because people are at home all day where the food lives. Most people are stressed out about global events and the activities we would normally do to keep our brains happy are no longer an option. Thus, the perfect storm for developing an overeating habit. So what can we do to overcome these overeating patterns? The first thing you can do is practice the broccoli test. The second thing you can do is remove the addictive and highly palatable foods and instead eat whole and healthy foods. The third thing you can do is do not skip a meal. When we overeat, we have the tendency to punish ourselves by refraining from eating the next day. This is going to lead to restrict binge cycles because the body will go into starvation mode and you'll end up eating far more at your next meal simply because the body is afraid that it will be starved again. The fourth thing you can do is engage in a hobby. This is going to give the brain dopamine so we aren't constantly searching for a hit of pleasure through food. Engaging in hobbies make us feel satiated and thus less hungry. It's a bonus if the hobby includes physical activity, which can also help to balance out endorphins and regulate our hunger signals. The fifth thing you can do is repress your hunger with supplements. The first supplement I would recommend is magnesium. Magnesium helps the nervous system to relax. Magnesium is gonna be your number one nutrient to support your body from stress. So if you're a stress eater, magnesium is a really great supplement for you. The second supplement I recommend is African Mango. African Mango is really helpful for creating feelings of satiety and feeling full all day long. It was originally developed in Africa when there was no food available. So people would eat the African Mango so they wouldn't feel the feelings of hunger throughout the day. It's really helpful to use in your daily routine if you're somebody who has cravings all day long and it's gonna help to increase leptin sensitivity which is the hunger hormone that says, I'm full. Eating African mango is gonna make you feel full faster, so you're less likely to overeat. The third recommendation is including a high quality protein powder. When we include protein powder in our diet, it slows down the digestive process and makes us feel full longer. When we eat meals that are unbalanced, so higher in carbohydrates, Carbohydrates digest very quickly in the digestive system, so we're hungry like 20 minutes later. Including protein with every meal or having a protein powder is going to allow for more time in between each meal. All of the supplements are linked up below. If you guys have any questions, you can always comment or reach out. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week on another episode of NHealth TV.